Ever wonder about the mystery behind the words yesterday, today and tomorrow? These words hint at the concept of tenses in languages. Tenses, my friends, are the unsung heroes of our everyday communication. Imagine you are reading a novel. The magic of tenses transports you to the past, present or even future, all within the confines of your cozy reading book. In the realm of English, we usually talk about two main tenses, the past and the present, also known as non-past. The past tense takes up on a journey back in time describing events that have already happened. The present or non-past tense, on the other hand, is a bit of time traveler. It can describe events happening now in the past or even in the future. So tenses are the secret code that are sentences used to travel through time. So how do these time traveling words work? Let's dive deeper into the realms of past or present tenses. To start the past tense is like a time machine that makes us back to the events that have already happened. For example, when we say Lily called George yesterday, we are using the past tense to describe an event that took place before the current moment. Now the present tense is a bit more complex. You might think it's already about here and now, right? But it's not always that straightforward. Takes the sentence, George is under the bed here. The present tense is indeed describing an event happening right now. But what if I tell you, George leaves tomorrow or Lily eats a passion fruit? These sentences are also in the present tense, but they are not about the present moment. The first refers to a future event and the second describes an habitual action. In fact, the present tense can even be used to narrate past events or uses known as historical events. Imagine, you are telling a friend you will never guess that what happened to Lily yesterday. She walks in George flats and the woman screams out of the bedroom. And the present tense adds a sense of immediacy and excitement to this story. Even though it happened in the past, there is one more complex present tense to note. If I say Lily eats a passion fruit, it might seem like I am describing a specific event happening right now. However, this sentence sounds a bit unnatural. In spoken English, we would usually say Lily is eating a passion fruit using the present progressive form. With all these different use, some linguists prefers to label the present tense as non-past. It's a bit like a Swiss army knife of tenses capable of handling past, present and future events as well as habitual actions. That's the twist in the story of tenses. The present tense is not always about the present. But wait, there is more to the present tense than meets the eyes. This is where we introduce the concept of the non-past tense, a term some linguist prefers over present tense. It's a versatile player in the game of tenses with the ability to express past, present and future time. But that's not all it can do. The non-past tense also encodes habitual events. Let's dive it into it with an example. Consider the sentence Lily eats passion fruit. It does not mean that Lily is currently eating passion fruit. Rather, it says that Lily habitually eats passion fruit. It's an ongoing action, a routine, a habit. This interpretation is helped by the use of the mass noun passion fruit. You see, if we had said Lily eats a passion fruit, it would take on a different flavor, almost like a stage direction. It would seem to describe a specific eating event. But sentences like this are somewhat unnatural in ordinary spoken English when referring to present time. Instead, we would say Lily is eating a passion fruit using the present progressive tense. So you can see that the simple present or as we have come to know it, mm. non-past tense is quite the multitasker. It can refer to past, present and future time and it can describe habitual events making it a key player in linguistic toolbox. So the non-past tense is like the jack of all trades in the world of tenses. Now let's jump into the future. But wait, there is no future tense in the English. That's right. English doesn't have specific future tense to indicate the future events. Instead, it uses a variety of ways to refer to the future. For instance, consider a sentence, Lily will leave tomorrow. Here the future is expressed using the auxiliary verb will followed by the base form of the verb leave. This is often called simple future tense and another way to express the future is through present continuous tense as in Lily is leaving tomorrow. This is often used when a future event is already planned and decided. In both the sentences we are talking about future time but without any distinct future tenses. English cleverly leverages other tense and structures to express future time. 
सो इवन विदाउट अ फ्यूचर टेंस वी स्टिल कैन प्लान फॉर टूमोरो नाउ लेट स्टेप इन द रेलम ऑफ द कॉग्नेटिव सीमेंटिक्स विद एपेस्टेमिक मॉडल इमेजिन अ लार्ज सर्कल दिस सर्कल रिप्रेजेंट्स वॉट वी कॉल द इमीडिएट रियलिटी और हेयर एंड नाउ इट्स द ग्राउंड इन विच द स्पीच इवेंट इज हैपनिंग Don't think of an objective external reality, but rather the reality as perceived and understood by the individual speaking within the large circle. Picture is smaller shaded circle. This circle represents the language user, the speaker. If you this will. is where the magic happens, where the tenses comes into play. Now, why is this model important in understanding tenses and models? Well, it's because the tenses we use are based on our understanding and perception of reality. When we speak we are not just using words we are mapping and understanding of reality onto languages when we use the past tense we are referencing a reality that has already occurred from our perspective the present tense or non past as some linguists prefer can refer to an event happening in our immediate reality or a habitual event that occurs in our reality over and over again and while english does not have a future tense we still have ways to express future events again based on our understanding of reality remember this model is called the epistemic model the term epistemic relates to knowledge systems which we are essentially talking about here how our knowledge on reality influence our use of language this wraps up on a journey through the time machine of tenses and the cognitive map of the epistemic model so are we all time travelers now it seems so doesn't it we have journeyed through the realms of past and present tenses explored the enigmatic world of the non past tense and even discovered that english lacks a future tense who knew we have also delved into the intriguing epistemic model which gives us a glimpse into how our knowledge system interact with language quite an adventure indeed now that we have unraveled the mystery of tenses we can navigate through time with our sentences even better